Kenya's main opposition party on Tuesday announced plans for a public rally, but said it remains committed to easing political tension through dialogue after anti-government protests turned violent last month. Azimio La Umoja, the party of veteran opposition leader Riley Odinga, says it would hold direct engagements with the public, including a rally in Nairobi, as it prepares for talks with the government. The ruling coalition has also named individuals who will represent the government in negotiations with the opposition. The seven-member team was named on Tuesday after a meeting chaired by President William Ruto. The opposition had announced its team last week. Earlier this month, Ruto allowed for dialogue with the opposition on electoral reform, but within parliament. Joining me on the news is Head of Insight, Information and Intelligence at WS Insight Kenya, Declan Galvin. Thank you very much for giving us your time on NC Continental Prime. Now, the government has finally called for a dialogue with the opposition. What do you make of all of this? So this is um, really notable and important progress, particularly when you consider the kind of feelings of, of, of the political and security situation in Kenya spiraling only a few weeks ago. Uh, so the fact that we've got uh, teams from the government and from the opposition who are going to try to thrash out details um, around some kind of political solution is is kind of precisely the direction this needs to go. Um, but there's a lot that we need to see how it unfolds before we kind of feel like we're back on the right track. These call for dialogue and each side choosing their representatives. The opposition is still calling for rallies. This sends out conflicting signals, don't you think? So on the one hand, the fact that they want to, to kind of rally and, and to kind of speak out uh, around their concerns does feel like a little bit of a contradiction. However, uh, w it's very different than what we were seeing a couple of weeks ago, where there was a call for mass demonstrations across the country uh, and specifically for people to kind of descend on the central business district as well as state house. What we're seeing on the, the discussions of a rally this weekend is in the Kamakunji area. It's an area where there's kind of showgrounds and where people will often kind of meet and have harambes and other rallies. So the overall context is quite different. Um, and the way the opposition is framing this particular rally um, is that it's kind of a, a town hall where they can kind of receive uh, information from the public and, and, and kind of trial balloon issues. So it, it is different in many ways, but I know that that we'll need to see how it how it fold, unfolds before we we see if this is kind of backpedaling on the opposition's part. Uh, there, are, there are those who say the government's call for dialogue clearly indicates that it wants to see an end to the protest. Do you think the opposition will see this as a sign of weakness, a weakness that they can exploit to their advantage? So, look, it, the devil will be in the details. Um, the uh, the opposition has has called for for dialogue as well. So, uh, both sides have called for it. The modalities of how they engage uh, is and may continue to be the sticking point. Uh, neither side wants to appear to be strong, but neither side wants to appear to be saber rattling or or uh, invested in uh, hurting the country's economy or or, or society in a, in a more broad sense. So there's a lot of constraints here, um, but uh, ultimately uh, it's it's very good and it's welcomed by all actors that there's dialogue. Is opposition-led protest has been called um, is a high cost of living. Some would say this cannot be blamed on President Ruto's government, being that they only recently assumed office. So why is Raila Odinga bent on putting the government under pressure over this? So many people want to say that, that Ruto uh, and his government have nothing to do with with this economy, and certainly we are in the new Ruto administration, but uh, President Ruto was the deputy president for the previous 10 years. Uh, he has been in government and high power in, in high powered positions for a long time. So I don't think that it's fair to excuse Ruto from the current economic conditions of the country. 
Um, and 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 he would have certainly, if you if you look at the drivers of of, of many of these cost of living issues, whether it's inflation, whether it's the high cost of products, he would have been involved in decision making that that has you know exacerbated these issues. So yes, it's a new government. Uh, they certainly do have new ideas in terms of how to manage the economy, but they're not totally uh, um, pure in terms of looking at the current problem we have. The blame should go around if we have to look for a solution. Thank you very much for speaking with us, Mr. Galvin. Thank you.